good? Yeah, we're all high Yeah, we're good to record, yeah. Okay. All right, this is Aspire. Uh, this is the main screen when you open it fresh off the desktop and or your start menu. Um, we're gonna click uh, create a new file. Um, it's gonna ask you the size of your job. Now this is the board you're gonna be working on. You want to set this to the board you're actually gonna cut, not some theoretical number. Um, you can change this later, but it, it helps you out uh, down the road if you already have a board picked out you're gonna run your project on. All right, right now, I'm just gonna put 12 by 12. Uh, that's how I do a lot of my just whatever designs. When I'm just designing something I know I'm gonna use later, but I don't know exactly what piece of wood I'm gonna put it on, because I can always change the size of it and the board it's located on uh, later. All right, I'm gonna tell it half inch thick. All right, and then where it says Z0, you want the Z0 clicked on the top, it means that the, the Z axis comes off the top of the board. So all of your depths will be in negative numbers. It's, it sounds kind of convoluted, but in, you'll see in a second. And then X, Y origin position should be in the bottom left of that square. All right. Uh, use origin offset should be unclicked. Units should be inches. Modeling resolution should be standard. Um, there is no need to go higher, very high. This uh, doesn't have very good 3D processing, so it is absolutely just a time waster. And then appearance is whatever material you guys want. MDF uh, tends to show things really nicely, so it shows sh shading and shadowing. So I always just use MDF and then click OK. Uh, solid brass also looks pretty decent. And then you can get different colors. It's all up to personal preference, but I think MDF shows you mistakes a lot easier. Let me know when everyone's there. And then you said OK? Yep. And that'll generate a 12 inch by 12 inch uh, board. All right. Now on the left, we have the drawing bar. All right. There's file operations like save, cut, paste, you know, undo, redo. Uh, under that, we have 2D view controls, which is zoom out, zoom in, and uh, track around your part. Um, if you have a mouse with a scrolly wheel, you're already set because you can zoom in and zoom out with a scrolly wheel, and you can you can click uh, uh, one of the hand tools to move around. You can click that tool and you can move it around. Um, in 2D control menu, um, then we have create vectors, which is creating basic shapes: circles, ovals, squares, uh, curved lines, uh, jagged uh, polylines, which is a bunch of lines connected. Um, you can do polygons, stars, and then it gives us text and uh, kerning and a couple other things. Uh, for those who don't know what kerning is, is spacing between text. So uh, alignment of your text. So you can wrap it around curves and do all kinds of things. And then the last one in that tab is my favorite, probably the most important for doing logos, is the fit vectors to bitmap. This is the command that lets you bring in an image and turn it into a toolpath, like I showed you earlier with the, the Corvette logo. All right. Underneath that, we have edit vectors, and basically this is selecting a vector, uh, cutting a vector, flipping a vector over. A vector is just a line uh, that is in a format that the PC knows as it stretches, it doesn't distort it. Uh, the way a fe uh, vector works is the computer only knows where the endpoints are, and then it just draws a line between them. You know, if it's got a couple points, it'll draw a curve. So vectors can be scaled infinitely. That's why they work good for, for this. So everything has to be converted to a vector before it can be cut. All right, I'm gonna um, go through an overview of the edit vectors things as we get to them. Uh, next below that we have align objects. You have two rows. You have the top row, which is absolute, which is um, you have one at center, all the things into the center of the material, anything that's highlighted will center. Uh, move selected, uh, center the X axis, and then center them in the Y axis. Then below that, you have ones that are not filled in, and these are, you can center two objects independently. It doesn't matter where they are in the material. So if I have two circles that need, a small circle needs to be exactly in the center of a big circle, it doesn't matter where I draw them, I can clip them in the same place with one button. All right, and it's, it's a really useful tool to really quickly draw nice, nice things. Now below that's the modeling tools. We will not get into that today. I am still learning that. It is a very intense process to basically draw a 2D object and then make it 3D and then machine it. 
So it's very complicated and they make super long run times. But if you want high detail, that's what you guys need to learn. Um, in the help uh, menu, there is a bunch of video tutorials saved on your guys' computers right now that you can watch at your leisure on the 3D modeling side of it. All right. But right now we're going to start. Um, we're just going to start by drawing a circle. All right. And I'm going to select the circle tool, click where I want and hold with the left click, and then drag it to whatever I want. All right. And it's going to create a circle. Now I can then, with the circle menu still up, I can tell it the exact position I want it to be and the size I want it to be. So, for instance, I'm just going to tell it it's a six inch circle and I want it to be at the center of the circle, I want it to be at six inch, six inch. That means this is 12 inches tall, 12 inches wide, that'll put the circle right in the center. I can do it another way, but I'm already in the menu, I might as well. Bam, it enlarged it and centered it. And I can close it. You put the end, Mike? All right. Drawing things is, is quite simple. Uh, I'm just going to go through most of the drawing tools really quickly so you get an overview on how to draw, and then we'll go right into tool paths. All right. Um, ovals, kind of lips, uh, is the same thing as an oval. Um, it's a little bit different to use. You just click, drag, and then as you smush it, it will change its shape. Uh, this is very useful if you're trying to connect two points with a radius and it doesn't have to be perfect. You can just draw the oval over top what you're trying to connect and then cut the part of the oval you need and use it. It's a very simple thing. Um, I'm not going to draw one, but then we'll go to the square tool and I'm going to draw a square. And I'm just going to start somewhere in the top right hand corner. Are you guys following along too? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just getting to the. I can send you that file. There you go. Just, no, it's right here. Yeah, just type that in. Yep, that's what I'm doing. All right. And then. Um, what size do you guys want this to be? Give me a number. Five by five. Five. five by five. All right, and then um, you can tell with circles, they always locate off the center. Uh, with squares, ellipses, or anything else, they locate off of either the center or four corners. So I'm gonna have it locate off the corner, and I'm gonna type six by six. That means the corner of this will be exactly in the center of that circle. All right. Let me know when you guys are to that point. And then we just click close. You anchored it? Is that what you have Yeah, you, you anchored it off the bottom left corner. So if I apply it, okay, so if I apply Yours it. Yours is anchored off right the center. Right. Yeah, right. you have to anchor it off the bottom left hand corner. All right, and then you tell it five by five. <laughs> Why did it change? Because it changed your X and Y when you clicked it to anchor. Supplying it, please. Still? Alright, there's a couple different ways that we can combine these two objects to cut them. Uh, you could cut a circle and then cut a square, but then you would have all this overlapping material that it would cut twice. Uh, and say we just wanted to cut this shape into a piece of material. Say a, a component drops into it. And that's the size of our component. Um, so it would cut the circle and then it would cut the full square. So you would have this dead space in the middle that you'd already cut when you cut out the circle that would just be a waste of time. Uh, and it might fuzz up your finish a little bit too. Um, so what we're going to do is there's a couple different ways we can attack this. The question? Clip. Shoot. Sorry, and this is kind of related, but I created extra squares. Just click like on them, click on the square you don't like. All right. You got to get the, um, in your edit vectors, grab your select tool. Click the select tool, click the square you don't want, press your delete button. Alright, thank you. Alright. You want to get rid of that other square too? Yeah. Okay. Alright. Um, so, I'll show you one of the more complicated ways because here we can do it very simply, but it's called node editing, which is right here. It's the second thing under edit vectors. Alright. There's a simpler way to do it with basic shapes, but with complex shapes, you need to go in and manually tell it where to cut. All right, And I use this a lot on complex design, so I feel this is a very uh, needed skill. So I'm going to clip the two where they intersect in two places, All right, and then get rid of this dead area. So I'm just going to zoom in with my 
uh, rolly mouse. If you don't have a rolly mouse, you got to use the zoom in tool. And I'm going to click on one of the lines. All right, and then my you notice my cursor changed. It's got a little squiggly line underneath of it. it means I've selected a line, and then I'm going to click near that intersection. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to go down to cut vector, or you can type in the C on the keyboard if you want to be fancy about it. All right, and it'll show you a point there. That means it has sliced the vector right there. So this square is no longer a complete square. It's got a cut in it. All right, and then I can go to the other intersection of the circle and the square, zoom in, get sort of close to it. Doesn't have to be perfect, and click cut again. So when we zoom out. It has two sections. I got this little 90 degree section of the square, and I got the rest of the square. And it has automatically selected the corner piece. It's collected, it's connected all the points. Right now, I can just click delete, and it's gone. Sometimes it doesn't automatically select the piece you want. You have to back out of the tool by clicking selection mode over here under edit vectors, and then select which side of the vector you want to delete. All right. So, so you only uh, deleted a portion of that vector? Portion of the square, yeah. Not, but not the portion of the circle? No, not yet. We're going to go back in. All right, same thing. Oh, that, so then you go back in again? Yeah, but you, you have to select what you're going to cut first. So you either select the square or the circle. I'm going to select the circle. That way it knows when I zoom into it, you can't always tell what line you're cutting. And then just anywhere there, I'm going to click cut. And I use the zoom in, zoom out constantly. It's nice. Cut. <clears throat> now, it is automatically selected for me the big part of the circle. Well, I don't want to automatically delete that. So I'm going to go out of over here to edit the edit vectors menu and click selection mode. And I'm going to select the short section of the circle and just hit the delete button. That is the shape I now want. Oops. Just hit Control Z. Yeah. How do you get the, um, what I did was <clears throat> made the square, circle and the square, and then I right clicked on that point, it didn't give me that cut like that. Alright. Show you the resize tool real quick. Mm -hmm. um, type in, uh, unclick link, mm -hmm. and type in 5 and 5. Alright. Mm -hmm. Now, if I click them, they're still individual lines. They're not connected. I cannot cut them. You cannot cut a line that's not, um, you can't cut the inside out of it unless it's a complete shape. It doesn't know what's the inside, what's the outside if you don't complete the lines. So even though they might be overlapping or touching, the machine goes, this, these are two different shapes, even though they're cut apart and they're laying on top of each other. So you need to join them, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click one, I'm gonna hit the control button, and click this, or the shift key, and then click the second one. So it selects both. Um, if you only have a couple items, you can just drag and highlight all the things on the screen. But if you have a bunch of things on the screen, you need to hold shift and click the ones individually you want to link together. All right, how are we linking them again? Select both of them. With the hold selection the shift. mode? Yeah. OK. So Hold shift and click the second one. OK, and then? All right, there's a couple different ways we can do it. We can click uh, weld-selected vectors. Um, if they're not perfectly lined up, that will not work. So if you've got two circles that are lined up, whatever two items that are lined up, that'll weld them and delete the center. It's not always, it doesn't always work perfect. So what I'm going to do is on the bottom row, there is a, the, on the, uh, under edit vectors, the bottom row on the left, it says join open vectors. It's a circle with a bunch of dots on it. We're going to open that. All right. And it tells us, Selected vectors, there are zero closed and two open. So there's two open ones that aren't complete. All okay. right. Can, can we back up one second? Yeah. So what I've got right now, I've got my circle, I've got the intersection square cut out. Yeah. Okay, now we're trying to join this. Well, you need that. to delete this portion of the circle. Okay. Did you trim this piece yet? No. All right, go back into node editing. Okay. Click your circle. All right, and then near that, right click. Oh, right, right, that's right. And then go to the cut vector. Go right here and uh, here. Yeah, cut, cut it down. down. Yep, right, cut right. it down. No, yeah, you've already cut that one, so it's, it's got this little section. Just click the delete key on your keyboard. Okay. Ah. So highlight both of those now. Okay. And under the edit vectors, 
the bottom left one. Yep. All right. Now it tells you how many is open, how many is closed in the selected, and it gives you a tolerance. And that basically says, I will. This tool joins any lines that are within that tolerance. All right. So I give it uh, a, a tolerance. I know that those gap that is bigger than that gap. So if that, those two lines are within a sixteenth of an inch, I want to tell it 0 0.062 because that is a sixteenth of an inch. Um, if they're an inch away, you want to give it an inch. All right. On mine, it says 0 0.7. Um, that's because I was connecting stuff that was really far apart. Um, anything over 0 0.05 usually connects everything you need. So it just depends on how far they are. But we do these on top of each other, so that's not they should be pretty much. close. So just, no, just be fair I mean, we not really perfectly. Really Unless you zoomed in as absolute possible, uh, as close as possible, they will not be perfect. This this program is accurate to within tenths of thousandths of an inch. So when you cut that vector, so yeah, actually, I wasn't, I wasn't perfect. Even, I wasn't even on the line when I selected it. Yeah, so anywhere it, it's cut somewhere, they're not quite touching. So this, when you click the join vectors tool, you have this open. And tolerance, I'm just going to type 0.2. That's just shy of a quarter inch. And I, and I look below that, and it says vectors after joining, there will be one closed and zero open. All right? All right, if anybody wants to see this on my screen, you can see where I, where I cut them. Well, I thought it was automatically selecting the intersection between those two nope. lines. It's not. So if you can see where I cut one. It's, it's hanging off a little bit. Yeah. The other one's pretty much right on. Now. If you're not sure about what tolerance you should use, just look at where it says vectors after joining. If it doesn't give you closed vectors, then you need to increase your tolerance. You need to tell it, okay, go a little bit further. I just tell it usually like an inch, because I'm usually only selecting two things to join, and I don't care how far they are apart. They're usually within an inch. All right, and I click join. Now they are all one item. You want to select your tolerance? Mm -hmm. Oh, yours, yours is close uh, enough. Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually yeah, did it. Okay. I, I actually use this tool right here. Well, select as well. I was teaching Node editing first. Okay. It doesn't ask me to join. Did I already join accidentally? You're no longer you you no longer have the selected. You got to select both. All right. So you have two open. With your tolerance, you'll have one closed. Click join. It'll now delete the excess, move the lines, or add a connector line to fit. Um, it will not move the lines like out of position unless you use another tool. So this way is a very accurate way to, if they're crossed, mm -hmm. it'll just clip the ends and, and automatically glue it together into one vector. When it says I have one closed vector, does that mean I have one complete shape? You have one, one com closed circuit. So, so if I have vector. multiple join shapes, it, only, it wouldn't join all of them, but it would... It only joins the, the ones that are selected. No, if I selected multiple joined. Yeah, as long as they wouldn't join them all together. It you can join up to a thousand if you wanted to, as long as they were all selected. That's not what I'm asking. Yeah, if you if you had a bunch of them that were overlaid, mm -hmm. all right, and it said uh, open vectors five hundred, all right, and you made the tolerance big enough, but the problem it's going to have is it it it's going to join each line to the closest line. So if you got things too too close, it might not go to where you think it's going to go. It's going to measure out the two, the closest path to clip. All right. Um, we can now do a quick tool path with this. Um, you guys, uh, the flip and rotate items and are pretty self-explanatory. The second line under edit vectors, you have move selected vectors, which you can move now. Now, I had set the circle at six six. It's now two vectors together, so my numbers are going to change. So I can tell that where to move it if I want to move it to a precise location on the board. How did you get to that thing? It's an under edit vectors. It's okay. the second row is the first one. It's called move selected vectors. Okay. All right. And then you click your vector and you move it to wherever you want precisely. Okay. And always double check where your anchor point is in any of the movement or scaling menus. This is the anchor point. So which point on the vector is it going to use to position those numbers? <coughs> So if I wanted to put the bottom corner in the corner of my material, I would click the bottom corner of anchor and then X, Y position, zero, zero. Can you select an anchor on the screen? No, it's only one of those five quadrants. So when you click on it, it looks like there's nine positions on the screen, but only yeah. five in the... 
Yeah, because you'd have to do some math if you wanted to use one of the center ones on the right or the vertical. All right, um, and then you just click apply and it'll move it. Right now I'm not gonna move it, but we can scale it. Right next to the move select vectors is scale selected vectors. Ooh. Yeah, and, and this is great. No, that's not what I'm looking at. Those, those squares that you're seeing in the middle there, Yeah. those are for the center one moves. Yeah, and the other ones you can the drag and stretch. stretch. But I, I'm, I'm teaching you the precise no, 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 way to move things no, 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 because no, 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 you guys are going to be 